I got a handicap blacker to my truck, my cane and all that. Uh, she told me to move my truck out of the handicap spot. I can't park in the handicap spot anymore because people have been complaining, right? And they're not complaining because I'm a handicap. They're not complaining because I'm a disabled vet. They're complaining because of this. Because I have a sticker that says, proud atheist, right? And they're also complaining about that one. So that's what they have a problem with. In a country that I signed up to go fight for, I can't park in a handicapped spot because I don't believe in the same God as them. Welcome to the fucking South. People often ask me why I bother to advocate for atheism. And it's people like the savage atheist, the guy in the intro of this video, who inspire me. While religious people can prominently display their Jesus bumper stickers, this man who fought for their freedom to do so isn't accorded the same rights and privileges. It's complete nonsense. Anyhow, I did have a couple of really quick announcements before we get into the video. First off, I've come to realize that I need to slow down on YouTube. I can't keep up the full-time job and two to three videos per week, as well as a bi-weekly podcast pace without burning out sometime in the near future. With this in mind, I've decided to go with a regular upload schedule. From now on, I'll be uploading a new video every Wednesday. In addition to this weekly video, I'll be doing the Heathen Hour podcast every Saturday at 8.30pm Eastern Time, which will be starting in the very near future. Shannon and I are working on scheduling more guests and we'll be transitioning over the course of the next month from bi-weekly to weekly. I'm also working on improving the production quality of the streams. If I'm able to get out a second video during the week, I'll do that, but I'm not going to require it of myself. I hope you're all okay with that and that you understand my dilemma. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. If I were an atheist, which I'm not, I would, you know, basically try to cheat, lie, steal, do anything I could and get away with it and make as much money as I could so that I could live my life to the very fullest knowing that this is all I have. Why does money equal fullest in your opinion? Money is only an aspect of life, but it's not everything. We also know that wealth doesn't always lead to happiness and can quite often contribute to being unhappy. I wonder how many religious people would think this way if they weren't raised believing that their worth rests in God in an afterlife. Imagine a world where people were allowed to value their shared humanity, their conscious experiences, their ability to enjoy sex, their capacity to create great works of art, and so forth. Imagine a world where we valued these attributes and abilities more than whether or not we pleased one God or another. I often wonder if people like Kevin here would still be talking this way. I wonder if he'd finally understand why atheism doesn't naturally lead to a life of crime or the need to hurt people. So I might as well do everything I can to make as much money as I can so I can buy as many things and as they say, he who dies with the most toys wins. If I were an atheist. I am not an atheist, but if I were an atheist, that would be the, my philosophy. Is that your philosophy? No, that's not my philosophy, and I find it troubling that you've been brainwashed into believing it should be, or that without an immaterial being in the sky, you'd be reduced to believing such a thing. By the way, religious individuals and organizations are great at amassing wealth. In the US, the faith economy is worth over a trillion dollars a year. Two-thirds of the world's millionaires self-identify as religious, and half of those are Christians. It sure doesn't seem like it's the atheists who value money more than anything else. You might want to take a good hard look at the religious institutions and individuals you're supporting, Kevin. I'm, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna change my belief by your comments. My belief is firm. My faith is firm in Jesus Christ. My faith is firm that the Bible is the inspired word of God. And it's not something that's medieval. It's not something that's, you know, ridiculous or anything like the comments I've seen. No, it's not comic strip stuff. It's nothing like that. It's serious business. Well, it is ridiculous. There's no question about that. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. People don't leave comments or make videos like this one to convince you. We leave them for other people who may find your video convincing, and we're hoping to snap some of them back to reality. Now, if it also snaps you back to reality, that's amazing, but that's not what we're banking on. And you say, where's the evidence? And I tell you this. Have you ever thought about music? No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Where does music come from? Why do we have such a thing as music? Why do we have musical notes? 
There's seven of them, from what I understand on the scale. Seven musical notes. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. There's actually 12 notes. We make music because it's pleasing to listen to. It's not a mystery, and it certainly doesn't prove you're God. Next. You know, seven in the Bible is God's number of divine completion, divine perfection and completion. Seven. It's used over and over and again. That's why there's seven days of the week. Vladimir Putin, but Putin is playing a really tough... The seven-day week predates Christianity and is actually based on the seven heavenly bodies, the sun, moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. The seven-day week came to prominence when it was adopted by the Romans, who named the days after their pagan gods. Next. God created everything in six days and rested on the seventh day. Okay? Seven is prominent throughout the scriptures. There are seven colors in the rainbow that's in the sky when you see a rainbow in the sky. You're wrong. Here's why. We can see seven colors when we're looking at a rainbow with our naked eye, but we know there are more colors not visible to us without the aid of technology. And there are more animals on this planet who could discern more colors in a rainbow than the seven we can see without technological aid, such as the mantis shrimp. Next. No evolutionist has ever given a good explanation of how life began. How did it begin? They can only speculate and give answers that really are not credible. But God snapping the world into existence in seven days is completely credible. Evolution doesn't deal with how life began. Evolution deals with the process by which organisms change over time. The answer to how life began is, I don't know. However, science is our best bet at figuring it out. Another thing to think about is this. In evolution, the only thing there is, is what you can see and feel, you know, what you can touch and see. Okay, just physical objects, right? So, yeah, you know, reality. <laughs> no magic, no supernatural bugaboo, just reality. Physical things. But yet we know, because we've seen evidence of it, and people have seen it for themselves, and there's evidence on film of a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm all around us. There are spirits. There are holy angels, and there are demons. God is a spirit, okay? And angels are spirits. And fallen angels or demons are also spirits. And they do possess people. And it's happened and it's been documented. As I was making this video, you pulled it down. But I looked at the description box and you had zero links and zero evidence for any of that. No, demons don't exist. No, demon possession isn't real. No natural explanation has ever been replaced by a supernatural one. But we've replaced hundreds if not thousands of supernatural explanations in favor of natural ones. It's a one-way street, brother, and you're traveling in the wrong direction. How could you have such a thing as spirits when you have evolution? How can you have that? You can't have a spiritual realm when you have the theory of evolution. When you have Darwin's theory of evolution, you cannot have a spiritual realm, can you? So let's pretend I've lost my mind temporarily and I believe in a spiritual realm. Why would the theory of evolution preclude there being a spiritual realm of some sort? Evolution describes a process by which organisms change over time. It says nothing about a spirit or a spiritual realm. You can easily reconcile the two beliefs, and many Christians do. How can you explain the order of the stars rotating around the sun? There, there's, or the planets rotating around the sun and the moons and, and all the different things that are going on? How can you explain all of that? Gravity! Have you ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity! Gravity! The only thing that you can do to try to explain evolution as being something that's true is by giving it billions of years or millions of years for it to go from one thing to another, from one species to another. There again, you can't explain how life began. So billions or millions of years, something we had. <laughs> I'm not sure you're doing yourself any favors here, Kevin. Now, is there any animal, any animal, that can do what man does as far as building skyscrapers, putting together cars, 
even talking and communicating, writing things down, making videos like this I'm making right now, making cameras that make these videos. Does any animal do that? Does animal do an anim, do animals do any of the kind of things that man has is doing? Well, some of us can do those things, and the rest of us are riding on their coattails. I couldn't fix a car if my life depended on it. It took me several hours to put a toy box together, and I had instructions. I also can't fly like an eagle. I can't wrestle a polar bear into submission. I can't run 100 kilometers an hour like a cheetah. So yeah, we have some talents. We're more intelligent than other species of animal, at least as far as we know. We have opposable thumbs which allow us to craft tools. However, we are also soft, slow, and weak. I wouldn't say we're necessarily better than other animals. We're just different. I also have a vested interest in protecting human life, including my own, so I tend to value it over other species of animal, but that doesn't mean I don't value other animals and their conscious experiences. That's because animals act on instinct. Animals are programmed on to act on instinct by God. What are animals interested in? What do they naturally do? Well, they look for food. They sleep. They, you know, in cases of of uh, animals that eat other animals, they hunt. They hunt for other animals. Animals that are herbivores, graze, find plants and grass and things to eat. That's what they do. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this, but you do all of those things as well. You hunt for food at your grocery store. Some people literally hunt for their food. You sleep. You likely eat other animals, although some of us don't. You also eat plants. Come on, Kevin. Wake up. Why does man have laws? I mean, <laughs> and honestly, honestly, if, if we're just the results of evolution, everything just happening by chance, and by, as you would say, science, if all that just happened by chance and science... Why do we have laws? Why do we have a such thing as morals? Why are certain things good and certain things evil? Where'd that come from? Where did good and evil come from? It came from us. If I were in your car right now, clipping off your fingers and toes while you screamed in agony, you'd likely have no problem describing that behavior as evil. We are social animals. We have dominated this planet because we can work in very large groups. We can create civilizations and construct laws that help us coordinate our actions and behaviors. We have social norms and empathy. Good behavior often leads to human flourishing and happiness. Evil usually corresponds to cruelty, unnecessary suffering, and a loss of social cohesion. I mean, that's pretty broadly speaking. Ethics has a lot of moving parts and it's not easily explained in a YouTube video like this one. But we can use our reasoning, empathy, and the objective facts our actions produce to navigate an ethical path. No God required. Because the type of reasoning that you have is not consistent with true atheism. If you were an atheist, you wouldn't even care one word about what I'm saying because you just laugh me off and say, this guy is nuts. This guy is believing in a God that doesn't exist. Yet you come on and you make comments on my video and you put me down and you try to belittle me and belittle God himself in the Bible. And why? If you don't believe in him, why do you need to belittle him? If he doesn't exist, why waste your effort? A better question would be, if he is all powerful, why bother defending him? I don't believe in your God, but I certainly believe in people like you who go around spouting absolute nonsense like you did in this video. I know you perpetuate the myth that atheists have no good reason to act ethically. I know you normalize believing in things on bad evidence. I know you deny science and push your religious agenda. That's why some of us oppose you. We oppose you. We're not opposing your made-up God. Well, I'm here to tell you that God does exist. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. He was pre-existent as God. God is one God, three persons. There's the Godhead. Kind of like the tip of the penis? God, three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Followed by the shaft and balls. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers. Around the world, God's servants all rejoice. 
Praise Jehovah with a cheerful voice. Whatever comes our way, we fear no harm. We will get through, we have God's mighty arm. We won't give up, and no, we won't give in. Jehovah's on our side, this is a race we'll win. Smile.